Hey everyone, another day, another handheld, with this one being Aeneo's Pocket S. The Pocket S is Aeneo's second Android handheld, and also their new flagship premium Android handheld, being the first to have the Snapdragon G3X CPU. Despite aiming for a high-end luxury minimalist design, it's certainly premium in price, starting with an Indiegogo price of $399, which immediately puts it in competition with the Steam Deck and other Windows-based handhelds, and a whole $100 ahead of the Odin 2 base model. The Pocket S is unquenchably sleek while being remarkably thin and light, but with that kind of price, it's going to have to do a lot to impress straight out of the gate. Spec-wise, as you'd imagine, or at least hope for the money being asked for it, is quite respectable. On paper at least, the Pocket S is going to be one of the more powerful Android handhelds out there for a while. It's powered by the new Snapdragon G3X Gen 2 CPU, has either 12 or 16 gig RAM options, has a 6 inch IPS display that comes in either 1080p or 1440p options, a 6000 milliamp battery, a very lightweight profile of 360 grams considering its power, and Android 13. In addition, the Pocket S has Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3, display port out via the, its USB-C port, Hall Effect triggers and sticks, RGB lighting, and onboard storage that starts at 128 gigs all the way up to one terabyte. So I do have the ergonomic protective grip that I'll try out later, but straight out of the box, the Pocket S does look premium, although it does have a lot going on around its shell. Around the edges, we have a metal banding that helps give it that premium look, while on the left, we've got the micro SD card tray slot. On top, we've got four shoulder buttons and two triggers, the fingerprint reader power button, volume buttons, and the fan outlet. On the right, we've got the turbo switch, which is completely covered by the official grip, but thankfully you can toggle between the performance modes in software. While underneath, we've got the speakers, intake, and USB-C port. Of course, on the front, in addition to the standard controls, we've also got a home button, a Neo button, and a function button. So there's definitely a lot going on with the Pocket S's layout. The controls of the Pocket S are overall pretty good, but for me at least, not best of class, and without the ergonomic grip, they do feel slightly boxy and compact just due to its straight back. The shoulder buttons, despite being so thin, are super responsive and can be pressed effectively from pretty much any angle, while the triggers manage to find the perfect Goldilocks level of resistance for their relatively small size. The face buttons are glossy and have a bit of a raised feel to them, and are perhaps a bit on the small side for the glossy finish, but overall they are very responsive and work very well. The D-pad looks like it's trying to pull off a Sony PSP style, but that is in looks only. The feel is a little too loose for me, with a bit of a restrictive pivot to it, making multi-directional inputs usable, but with a little bit of a learning period to get used to this D-pad centre pivot. Fortunately, the ergonomic grip is a literal game changer, immediately somewhat addressing some of the issues with long-term comfort while gaming. It does make me wonder why the Pocket S just didn't have some form of grip straight out of the box, as it makes the whole gaming experience better. As well as making gaming in general more comfortable, especially if you're playing modern games with a joystick-centered control scheme, it also helps act as a bit of a buffer between your hands and the built-up heat of the shell, which again helps offering a more comfortable gaming experience overall. Unfortunately, the ergonomic grip isn't quite thick enough for my personal preference and somewhat restricts access to the top buttons, but it certainly does add to the experience overall and my Pocket S will likely live in it because of this. I do wish that the joysticks had a bit more height and travel to them and that the D-pad was a little more responsive in its centre pivot, as considering the RRP here, I personally expect top tier controls and we're simply just not quite there. The 6 inch IPS 1440p screen is unquestionably a good screen, and the bezel-less design is awesome, but I personally would have liked a &E to one-up themselves on their Pocket Air's 5.5 inch OLED screen, which looks absolutely amazing. In terms of firmware, the a &E Android editions are pretty good and substantial in terms of options. The dedicated a &E key brings up their overlay no matter where you are, and it's great in switching modes quickly, and the performance overlay is quite neat here too. Aeneo certainly seem to have learned a few lessons along the way from their Windows handhelds, and having such a powerful overlay quickly available is certainly very handy here. With that said, the dedicated AS Space app is still quite a long-winded and painful process to set up and suffers from the odd translation issues while setting up your account. And there's just not quite as many customization options that are yet available, 
considering all the custom controls that the Pocket S does have to its credit. It will be great to see Neo develop their Android setup more though, as there is strong fundamentals here. Unfortunately, due to how new the CPU is, there isn't the strong community driver support that you'd find in the likes of Odin handhelds at the moment, but I do hope support here grows too. With that in mind, I'll cut some emulation footage now before summarising back up at the end.
So ultimately, to sum up my first impressions with my retail unit of ANEO's Pocket S, I'm ultimately not left as impressed as I thought I would be. The Pocket S is a great handheld and a premium powerful one at that, but it's not quite the top tier Android handheld that my expectations wanted it to be. Did I just set my expectations too high here, or did ANEO set the pricing too high? I'd love to hear your thoughts, and please do let me know if you'd like some follow-up coverage of the handheld, and if so, what you'd like to see. That's it for now though, thanks so much for watching.